Good morning, and welcome to Bismarck United Church of Christ. It is such a blessing to worship alongside you, whether you join us here in person or you join us online from wherever you may be. Our bulletins are available in the welcome area, or if you're online, they're available as a PDF right beneath where you're joining us now for worship. If you're joining us on the church website, uccbismarck.org. As we come to worship this morning, I know that you come with so much from this week. As someone walked in, they said, you know, it's been holiday after holiday. I don't even know what holiday we're in the midst of. So you come in the midst of busyness, and we come in the midst of grief. We also had a text this morning from one of our church family members, and their cousin was in an accident. And so we hold that family in our prayers. So we come knowing that there are those in our community who are grieving this morning and ask to be surrounded by our love. And we come knowing that there are those in our community that are ready to celebrate this weekend that are filled with joy. And there are those in our community who are filled with just the overwhelmingness of so much. And that is one of the beauties of community, where we can stand alongside one another. We can be present with one another when we are in grief. We can be present and dance with one another when we are rejoicing. We can be present with one another and help lift up the burdens that we carry or remind each other that it's okay to put them down too. And so we come to this place. And in this place, We hold one another in love, and we take just an hour to put down all the burdens that you carry, to focus again on God, to hear these scriptures, to be present with one another, and be reminded that you are a child of God exactly as you are. Doesn't matter about your accomplishments, doesn't matter about your failures, You are wonderfully made. And so let us come with the first breath of life we were given, with a breathing just to take a deep breath. But let your body get comfortable first. Find the floor beneath you. Find the seat that you are seated on. Or if you need to stretch, get up and stretch. But let your body be present in this place. Close your eyes if you wish. Keep them open if you wish. And take a deep breath. Fill your lungs. Let it out. And breathe in again the love of God and breathe out the love of God. For we are blessed to be surrounded by God's love and have the blessing to share God's love with one another. Friends, welcome to this place. May you give yourselves the gift of being fully present with each other. And as we come, we join our hearts and minds in worship from near and far. And we come with our breath, and we come with the peace of Christ that was given to us. And the great blessing we have in sharing that peace with one another. And in this place, we do that in this way. We show each other our hands, for our hands are one of the ways we serve each other. And we say, peace be with you, and in response, and also with you. Let us pass the sign of peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Also with you. Peace be with you. For no matter who, no matter what, 
No matter where you are on the journey of life, you're welcome, welcome in this place, accepted and welcomed by God's grace. Let us sing these words of welcome to one another. The words from Psalm 66 will lead us through our call to worship. To the lines from this psalm, I invite you to respond with these words from verse 3. How awesome are God's deeds. All of creation make a joyful noise to God. How awesome are God's deeds. Sing the glory of God's name. Give to Yahweh glorious praise. How awesome are God's deeds. Come and see what God has done. God's deeds on our behalf are wondrous. How awesome are God's deeds. God turned the sea into dry land and people passed through the river on foot. How awesome are God's deeds. Bless Yahweh, all you peoples. Let the sound of God's praise be heard. How awesome are God's deeds. Will you join me in a spirit of prayer? Almighty God with us, you send us into the world as your agents of restoration and change. You speak to us in the stillness of our rest and in the chaos of a frenzied world. You guide us in troubling times and you move us to dance in celebration. We give thanks for your presence among us. Open all the points of receptivity within us as we worship you, holy and living God. How awesome are your deeds. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I'd invite you to join in singing There is a Spirit in the Air from the New Century Hymnal number 294.
Psalm 30. Psalm 30. I praise you, O God, because you raised me up and kept my enemies from gloating over me. I cried to you for help, Yahweh, my God, and you healed me. You brought me back from the realm of the dead, Yahweh. You spared me from going down into the pit. Sing to Yahweh, you who love God. Praise God's holy name. Yahweh's anger is fleeting, but God's favor endures forever. There may be tears during the night, but there is joy in the morning. When I presumed I was secure, I boasted, I will never be defeated. When I stood up in your favor, Yahweh, I stood as firm as a mountain. But then you hid yourself from me, and I was filled with terror. So I called to you, Yahweh, I pleaded for your help. What good will come from my destruction from my going to the grave? Does dust praise you, Yahweh? Can the dead proclaim your unfailing goodness? Hear me, Yahweh, and be merciful. Help me, Yahweh. And then you changed my despair into a dance. You stripped me of my death shroud and clothed, clothed me with joy. That's why my heart sings to you. That's why I can't be silent, Yahweh. You are my God, and I will thank you forever. As we come before God this day, we are reminded by the psalmist to let our hearts sing before God to let thanks be always on our lips and never ending. But we know there are times when thanks are not on our lips, times when we forget about God, times when our heart does not sing. And we come knowing that we are not alone in that. But we come. We come forward in our unison time of confession asking that God pulls us close again. Will you join in our unison confession? Spirit of the living God, temptation surrounds us. Fear of confrontation coaxes us to keep silent about things that matter. Desire to be right entices us to ignore the cries of our neighbors. Too often we ignore your call upon our lives. Too often we are the ones who refuse to welcome you, who resist the work of transformation, and who remain unresponsive to the burdens of our siblings in creation. Spirit of gentleness, direct us back to the path of life, the way of justice, in the hope of peace. Amen. Friends, our companion and advocate takes this journey with us. Our invitation to make the kingdom of God our dwelling place continually renews. The place where thanksgiving can be on our lips, where our hearts can sing as we stand up and live alongside one another in love. The righteous one opens the door, eases our entry into new life, new mercy, and new grace. And this is the good news, that we are forgiven, offered a fresh start, and so dearly loved. Let us join in the Gloria.
I'd invite any children or others young at heart who'd like to come forward. Good morning. How are you this morning? We're going to face this way because then people can see too. I do. There's a story with it. Hi, Lauren. So I've got a story and about somebody. So today, we're going to meet somebody. But not just anybody. This is a very important body. Well, he thought he was anyways a very important body. He thought he was so important, just so important, that all he thought about was me, 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 me. And he just went on and on and on about me all day long. You know what he would say? He would say, I am the very best of all men. The very best of all men, he boasted. I am the son anyone could ever want. The very best son in the whole wide world. And he was so, me, 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 that he thought he was really, really somebody special. Somebody special. Now, he was clever, and he was rich. And he had a nice house and a really good job, and he had really, really great hair. But God looked at Mr. Somebody and said, Do you think you're important because you are so clever? What do you think God said? God said, no, 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 being clever does not make you important. Do you think you're important because you have a nice house? What do you think God said? No, having a nice house does not make you important. Do you think you're important because you have really, really great hair? What do you think God said? No. no. Having really, really great hair doesn't make you important. And Mr. Somebody was sad. He was sad because he realized all those things did not make him important in God's eyes. And he thought to himself, no, I am not so special. No, I am not better than anybody else. I am just me.
and I understand that now. I am nobody, he said to God. And he said to God, dear God, I am so sorry. How could you love anybody like me? What do you think God said? God smiled. God smiled at Mr. Somebody and said, My dear, 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 dear son. My dear son, I loved you before you even knew me. I love you so very much. To me, you are somebody very special because I made you. And then the man smiled. He's happy. Yeah. So what do you think of Mr. Somebody who thought he was so important that he was more important than everybody else? And God reminded him he wasn't more important than everybody else. But just because he wasn't more important than everybody else, didn't mean he wasn't important, did it? No. And what were the things that made him important? What do you think? What didn't make him important? His hair, his really, really great hair didn't make him important. His house, his really big, nice house didn't make him important. His job. He had a great job, and that didn't make him important. What else? What made him important, though? What made our happy Mr. Somebody now important? Here. Because God made him. Yeah. So God made Mr. Somebody, and that's what made him important. Now I want you to look out and look at the people beside you. Look at everybody. Now, all of these people are people that God made, so they are all so very important. It doesn't matter how great their hair is today, does it? It doesn't matter if they have lots of hair or they have no hair, right? It doesn't matter how good of a job they have. It doesn't matter how big their house is. They are all so very important. Yeah. Now, I want you to look at your hands. You can't see your face, but can you imagine your face from looking in a mirror? Pretend you've got a mirror in your hands and look at yourself. See yourself? No. No. Imagination. Full imagination. Look at your, look at your brother or sister then. You see them? They're looking at you too. Now, as you look at each other, what makes the person next to you so very important? Or you so very important? The happiness? You're feeling happy? What makes you so very important? Yeah, Lauren, who made your mom? God made mommy. God made one of each of you. And that is what makes you so very important. So remember this week, 
that Mr. Somebody can be anybody. Mr. Somebody could be a Mr. Somebody, it could be a Mrs. Somebody, it could be just somebody without any titles, it could be anybody you walk by, anybody you see, anywhere you go, and it's you too. You are so very important because you are made by God. And remember, all those around you are so very important because they too are made by God. Will you say a prayer with me this morning? Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for smiling upon us, for reminding us that we are surrounded by such important people because they are loved by you and made by you and that we too are loved by you and made by you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Second Kings 5, 1 to 14. Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and taken captive a young girl from Israel and she served Naaman's wife. <clears throat> she said to her mistress, if only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he could cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means, go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him 10 talents of silver 6,000 shekels of gold and 10 sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, with this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you so you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, am I God? Can I kill and bring back life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of leprosy? See how he's trying to pick a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Has the man come to me and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel? So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elijah's house. Elisha sent the messenger to say to him, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, wave his hand over the spot and cure me of leprosy. Are not Alma, Pfeiffer, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the rivers of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down dipped himself in the Jordan seven times as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored, and he became clean like a new young boy.
and a reading from the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 11 and 16 through 20. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out the laborers into the harvest. Go on your way. I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if a person of peace is there, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town clings to my feet. We wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me. And whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. And he said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. Indeed, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Here ends our reading. Will you join me in a spirit of prayer? Almighty God, we give thanks for this faith community in which we can gather and hear these scriptures, in which we can have a safe place to have these scriptures challenge us, to be grown further by them, to have them stretch our hearts, our minds, and our very souls. We give thanks that you speak still to us, that you speak in the midst of the world, in the midst of all that is happening in our lives, in times of stillness and in times of busyness, your voice cries out to us. God, I pray that these scriptures may speak to us again. May they turn our hearts, may they turn our minds, may we find new wisdom in the midst of them. God, I pray that the words of our mouths in the meditations of all of our hearts may be found pleasing and acceptable in your sight. In Christ's name we pray, amen. We began today with the story of Naaman. And Naaman was one of those Mr. Somebodies. He was a Mr. Somebody who thought he was better than everybody else. And when he went to go and be healed and the prophet did not come out 
and greet him by name. The prophet, in fact, didn't even walk out of his front door, just sent a messenger out and said, Naaman, go wash in the river. Mr. Somebody was sad. Sad and angry. So sad and angry that he threw his hands up and was like, I'm leaving this place and don't want to have anything to do with it. Not because he hadn't been accepted. Not because he hadn't been offered a solution. Not because he hadn't been offered healing. Not because he hadn't been offered grace. Not because he hadn't been offered peace. But because he hadn't been treated as better than everybody else. And this Mr. Somebody, it took all the people around him, all his servants, all those who traveled with him to say, Naaman, really, I mean, you could use a bath anyways. Just jump in this water. Just jump in, Naaman. We're so close. If it doesn't work, we can storm all the way back, and we can wash in the waters of our homeland. And finally, finally, this Mr. Somebody decides, well, I might as well. He swallows his pride. He swallows his anger. He swallows his thoughts of, I am better than everybody else, and I'm going to storm away in protest if I am not treated as such. And he walks into those waters, as the prophet said. And he comes out with skin as smooth as a young boy's. Not only is he healed, but his skin reverses its aging process and is so smooth and healthy again. And this Mr. Somebody, who thought he was so important, so great, this Mr. Somebody who got mad when he was given a chance at healing and almost stormed away from that possibility of healing. We look back at the very beginning of this section in 2 Kings to the person who told Naaman about this. It was a servant, a servant girl who had been taken from her homeland. A servant girl who was not as important in Naaman's eyes. A young girl who remembered her homeland, remembered the prophets from the place where she was from, remembered all of that. And despite being taken from her homeland, Despite all the trauma she had faced, all the burdens she carried, when she saw this man in need of healing, she raised her voice. And she said, I know a prophet who could heal you. I know you should go there. And this young girl becomes such an unlikely prophet, someone who Naaman would have just ignored, but for some reason didn't. And he went with such an important letter, so much gold to the king of Israel, went from one important person to another important person. But then in Israel found that the healing came once again 
not from the most likely of places, not from one who's said to have the most power, not from Mr. Somebody in all of Israel, the king, but from a prophet who was just in his house and didn't even come out. Opportunities for healing, opportunities for transformation. Sometimes they come from such unlikely places. Sometimes they come right before us and somebody says to us, come be a part of this opportunity. Come, come serve, come feed the hungry with me at the banquet. Come, come pack a bag, come just sit with those who are in homelessness and just listen to their stories. Come, come have a water balloon fight with the youth. Come, come and just sit with someone you have not sat with for quite some time. And sometimes we're too busy or we have too many other so important things to do that we miss out. We miss out on the unlikely prophets who are right in our midst, the unlikely opportunities for transformation just waiting to change our very lives. The Bismarck Tribune right now is running a story on homelessness in Bismarck. I hope you take a look at it hear some of those stories, some of these stories that are also our stories, because this is our community. We have coming up the opportunity to serve at the banquet, to feed 400 some people who are hungry, and just to eat together, just to eat together. I don't know if such opportunities will transform your lives or not. Because this is the thing about the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit moves in mysterious ways. Sometimes it's something small, something almost that we would dismiss from an unlikely place that moves us to something greater. Like that young servant girl who said, I know a prophet in another land. She herself did not offer the transformation name and was not transformed in that, but it led him to transformation. Sometimes the opportunities before us, the opportunities to love, to reach out, to serve, for healing, sometimes they transform us right in that moment. Like Naaman walking into those waters and having his skin healed and transformed. Sometimes it's a series of transformations but often, often walking into the healing power of God, first we have to get out of our own way. Like Naaman had to let go of being Mr. Somebody so important that he wouldn't listen to the simplest of instructions. And knowing this story of Naaman, this story of healing, this story of setting aside ourselves and knowing that the prophets come from unlikely sources, the transformation comes from unlikely places, we are reminded in the gospel of these 72 disciples. 
these 72 disciples who were sent out to go to the places Jesus had not yet been. These 72 disciples who were given the power to go and cure others, to be present, to be agents of healing in the world, to be bearers of peace. They weren't the, one of the 12 disciples. We don't have the names of these 72 others who were sent out. Probably when you think of the gospel, you don't even think of these 72. Think of Jesus. We think of the 12. We think of the women that were at the cross. But maybe we don't think of these that went out, that paved the way that started the stories, that went out and became prophets. And as they went out as prophets, as they went out doing healing and opened themselves to that, they came back so surprised at how transforming it had been. So surprised. This is to live in the midst of God, to go out, to let go of all else, carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, just go fully into the love of God, listening for those prophets, listening for the word of God calling you to be a prophet to be agents of healing, to be recipients of healing, and to know that in it you will find magnificent surprise. Friends, may you walk into that. May you too be bearers of peace and agents of healing. May you find ways to open yourselves, get out of your own way to be that in every place and in every time. For this is what we are called to. This is good news. And I invite you to join and let us sing, We Are All One, reminding us that we are not Mr. Somebody, but we are beloved by God. Friends, as we come to this communion table, we're reminded that even the most simple of meals can become a place of healing. The most simple of meals gathered with friends, the most simple of meals gathered with those we don't yet know. The most simple of meals gathered with God's beloved children. And as you come to this table, we remember that night when Christ took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and said, come and eat. And whenever you eat of this, do so in remembrance of me. 
In the night when Christ took the cup and poured it out and said, Come and drink. And whenever you drink of this, do so in remembrance of me. It was on a night when Christ knew he would be betrayed. On a night when he knew his friends would desert him. And yet, still Christ offered healing. Still Christ said to them, you will go out and be the prophets. You will share this word of this meal and this good news that you carry. Once you get out of your way, let go of the fear and let yourself live into abundant life. This meal, this is an invitation into abundant life. Will you join me in a spirit of prayer? Almighty God, we pray that you will bless these elements, bless the bread and bless the cup that we have before us this day. Bless it in whatever form it takes, whether it is a loaf and a cup of wine or juice, whether it is a small token of your bread, of your drink, a reminder of your body, of your life. Christ, whatever it may be that we have before us, may you bless it. And may this meal bring us together as one people, and may this meal invite us into your sacred healing and to be agents of healing. And hear us now as we pray the prayer taught to us by Christ Jesus, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I invite you with what you have. There are communion elements in the pews. And you can tear off the top, to the bread, and the second tab for the juice, or with whatever you have. And let us partake together. Friends, this is the bread of life which has been broken for you. And this is the cup of the new covenant that has been poured out for you.
prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we give thanks for the fruits of the vine and the grains of the earth which sustain us. May this meal we have shared nourish and strengthen us to grow in communion with you and one another. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. I invite you to rise and join in our closing hymn. This is my song number 591. Bearers of peace, agents of hope, thank you for joining us in worship this day. Thank you for making time in your week to be present with one another. Thank you for making time in your week to ground yourself again in the scriptures. And Joanne, thank you for being our organist this morning. And thank you to Kirby for running the live stream and Mary Beth for being our liturgist. Next week, our worship will be outdoors on the church lawn, weather permitting. So I hope you'll join us, bring a lawn chair. Um, there is shade if you migrate during the service, but um, there's shade. Otherwise, wear sunscreen um, or bring a hat. And also, a reminder, if you'd like to sign up for the banquet, there's a sign-up sheet out there. And there's also these jars straight out as you go out. Our church exterior needs a new paint, and it's been narrowed down um, to the two paint colors, and we want your help to pick what's the final color. And so whichever color raises the most money to paint the exterior of the church is what we're painting it. And you can put how much money as you want, and how you can vote as many times as you want. Um, but there's jars out there. Right now, I think it's the cloud gray is in the lead with neutral ground following. And so... I invite you to be a part just for that fun piece and, um, and to help us paint the exterior of the church to protect um, the woodworking. We are also searching for an administrative assistant. 
Our administrative assistant, Donna, um, has a new position, and so we'll be leaving on July 22nd. So I invite you to share that, um, the opening with others, but I also invite you um, to stop by and just thank Donna for her last two years of work with us. She has done incredible work, and to thank her for that. As you go from this place, as you go out into coffee and treats in the fellowship hall, out into your week, may you know that you are a beloved child of God. And you are so important because of that. And that you are surrounded by others who are also so important because of that same thing. Beloved children of God, you are bearers of peace. You are agents of hope. May you let go of whatever egos keep you from living fully into that. Use your voices, use your feet, use your very lives in the work of love. As you go from this place, may you go bearing that peace, bearing that healing. For you are blessed by God. May you be a blessing to others. Amen.